When you have your girls, you're never alone. You get together for coffee, maybe to work out, or just to laugh. We created Hey Girl, just for you. Can't wait for you to join us. Hello, and welcome to Hey Girl. I'm your girl, Kim with an E, and this is episode 60. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Hey Girl is a safe space where you can share your experiences and be affirmed. Let's face it, life can be complex and sometimes overwhelming. That's why we believe in the power of conversation, because knowing you're not alone is what helps you get through. Welcome, everyone. Hey, girl. Hey, Audrey. What's hey. up? Hey. Welcome to you also. <laughs> yes, this, this is awesome. Is Episode um, number 60. I know. And we're in the month of June. Can you believe yes. it? Can you believe it? I Halfway mean, through 21. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like <laughs> 2021 is just flying by. I, right. I, I don't even know what happened to May. I blinked and it was done. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it I'm is- glad you're here. What well, were you saying? I was just going to say, it, it, it's crazy how quick it happened, but we have arrived. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't, I really don't think 2020 went as quickly by. I, I feel like t- what 2021 is in a big old hurry. <laughs> right. and, and who knows uh, why? Yeah, but, who but knows? Yeah. Who knows? It is. But I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad all of you are here with us today. And because it's June... Welcome to Black Music History Month. Now, I don't know how many of you know that that's what this is, but hey, since we're in this month and we're going to talk about Black history, Black music history, um, I would love if you would put in the comments, who is your favorite Black musician? And Audrey, Mm. you're the one who actually helped me to know that that June was a was officially Black Music History Month. I actually did not know that. What's right. interesting though is um, here in Huntsville we have a, a a celebration called Jazz in June mm-hmm. every summer, and you know I've been uh, participating in that for years, but I don't know I, somehow I missed that this is like the official month that actually it was recognized officially back right. in 1970 something you said 1979 president jimmy carter is the one that made it a official um date or official month yeah. to celebrate and then in 2009 um good old president barack obama did a proclamation for black uh, music month it's actually black music month but it's all encompassing of the history as well Got um you. and so okay It has been a thing for 40, what is this, 42 years now? Yeah. 42 years. Yeah, 79. It's it's a thing and it's it's widely celebrated. Um, Yeah. And the reason I know, well, is because professionally. Yeah. That's what I do. It's kind of your job. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Kind of my job. Makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) So that's that's why I know. And it's, um, you know, the history of us uh, as Black people Um, it's kind of sad that we have to set aside a month, but because we, it runs through everything that this nation, this, this world is built on. Um, but it's just, it's nice to be able to highlight what we have done, um, especially here in the States, but it didn't start here as we all know. Yeah. yeah, Right. (laughs) I do do think that it is great that we have this um, intentional time on the calendar, date mm-hmm. on the calendar, um, to uh, recognize the contributions of African Americans to the music world. And, you know, we have February, which we really talk a lot about African Americans in general and what they've contributed uh, to history. But I love that we, we also have this because, it, because music, I mean, music is everything. Mm, and it's everything. You know, to be able to really just home in on on the signi- significant contributions in this area, particularly, right. is awesome. I'm I'm excited to now actually know that this is a thing and to be able to um, kick off this month where we will be talking all about Black music and right. old and, and new. Absolutely, it's it's beautiful because music runs through everything that we do. Yeah. Biblically speaking, of course. Uh, music yep. is very 
much so a part okay. of the way that God has designed us. Um, I catch myself. I can just be sitting somewhere. If something comes on, just n- not intentionally at all just subconsciously I can feel my leg going up and down and I just crack up laughing at myself because it's in you um it it also it's not just a celebration but um it's a way that we have overcome it's a way that we've expressed ourselves um somebody I posted um last weekend I posted something on Facebook about a time my family just had a really rough time and someone said to me I remember you singing through your tears And so it's just what we do, you know, in in, in all situations, music is the one thing that connects the universe. Yes, I agree. I definitely agree with that. So those of you who are watching, put in the chat um, or in the comments, what what feeds your soul? What speaks to you in Mm -hmm. your your darkest time? What is there a particular song? Is there a particular artist who you go to Mm -hmm. when you're you know, having certain emotions. I know there's, there's, I could sit here and probably list several, depending on what <laughs> mood I'm in. <laughs> I listen to particular ones. Um, but it, put it in the comments, who your artists, your go-to uh, musicians and singers and songwriters that, that really are able to speak to your soul. And I think that that is so important for us to recognize that um, the power that music has mm-hmm. to really Absolutely. heal to, to empower us, to strengthen us, to, to get us through. And, and certainly that is connected to the history of African-Americans in this country, right? Mm-hmm. Like um, we can, if we were to trace that history, you know, where did black music begin? I mean, clearly it began before African, African people came to this country, but certainly once they were here, mm-hmm. it, it absolutely was what got them through. We think immediately about the spirituals, the slaves, uh, that the slaves sang in the fields, you know, they they were Christianized, they were converted to Christianity. And so they just in, infused the songs that they sang and that they brought with them from the, their country um, to into what became known as um, uh, spirituals, you know, and, 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 you know, spirituals are hymns, but they're not right. Like they, right. they, they, they have a very distinct sound and rhythm and, and they served a very dis- distinct purpose for those who sang them in that history. So, um, you know, if we were to, to trace back African-American music in this country, the spirituals is where it really started. And so much grew out of, out of uh, those early songs that the slaves would sing. So, Kim, what I found interesting, I was perusing, I don't know if it was YouTube or um, TikTok. This is during my insomnia. Um, Just perusing (laughs) through. (laughs) Yeah. And just talking about African diaspora, right? Um, Yeah. And there were some videos, dance videos, that you would think would be native to the um, continent of Africa. But Mm -hmm. they weren't. So they were going through different countries where we still, um, Africans, have such a high influence. Um, mm-hmm. So there were, um, you saw Peruvians who mm-hmm. um, looked um, like they were mixed, Peruvian and, and African, doing native African dances. And then they went to Brazil. Same thing, Brazilians, um, but they were doing native African dances. And I'm just like, Wow, huh. how amazing that oh. it is weaved through this entire yeah. earth, um, just which says a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically says a lot. Everywhere. So I just really was so amazed by, I mean, you know it and you've heard it, but yeah. to see it and to see it being what you have seen in the native country of, I mean, the native continent of Africa was just really amazing to me. Yeah, the fact that there's those influences extend they're heavy. so far, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. It just, yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. amazing. I I think and and uh, there's a journalist and podcaster by the name of Sydney Madden, who is quoted as saying, "Every genre that is born from America has black roots associated with it, and maybe it's not just from America, according to what you're saying, but there's mm-hmm. some uh, some of those black roots are are." Um, a little Certainly. bit of everywhere. A little bit of everywhere, yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we think about the history of um, recording artists, 
um, and how that, so we, we know that the music began in the, in the, um, in various ways, in various places, uh, but it wasn't written down or recorded anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Slave spirituals was a song and passed on to other slaves. And eventually we were freed um, and there became this industry of, of music, um, of course, as technology developed and, and you know, was able to be captured, the songs were able to be captured. Um, it's interesting to look at, um, I was doing some reading, of course, and I, I was interested in noticing how the music existed long before it was recorded. Mm -hmm. And our music in particular, music in general, but our music in particular, and there was a time in the, um, in the 1800s, particularly, where uh, even if our music was in circulation, the the sound that came out of those recordings was not ours. It was it was it was always um, they had particular people that they chose uh, to go into the recording studios to to work with the equipment. Their voices they were trained to to be at a certain distance from the microphone they called it a horn recording horn back then mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um and so they were very careful even if they were using uh the, the music that was in circulation black music or otherwise um they had very particular ways in which they wanted it to package it when it comes to recording right. and and getting it out to the world you know it needs to look and sound a particular way and so what i was reading talked about how talent scouts uh from recording companies would be on the lookout to recruit anyone with a good clear voice and good diction um and the recruits were trained to utilize various techniques to to make the recording sound just right and then they would just take the music that they found of singers who were popular then um black singers especially and and have these trained recording artists <laughs> to sing them and so it was a big deal then when we there actually was a black singer who was able to record uh, for the first time himself, not to have his music, you know, recorded by these trained singers. And his name was Johnson Williams. Was it? Let's see. Last name was Johnson. I'm looking through my notes here. Do you remember? The name of I the don't, first, I the, don't remember. Let me, oh, George Johnson. Yes, yes, George Johnson. yes, yes, George Johnson. So George Johnson was the first black recording artist who was able to actually get his own voice, right. <laughs> his own music captured uh, by the New Jersey Phonograph Company, Metropolitan and New Jersey Phonograph Companies. And then much later, uh, the first woman, black woman, was recorded, and of mm -hmm. course that was. Mamie Smith, and right. it was not until 1920. And so, you know, these dates are important because understand that the music was, these people were making music all from along. From day one. <laughs> from right. day one. From day one. But it took some time before they were actually given the opportunity to have their music uh, preserved in this way. Another thing that was notable during that time was it was called Race Records when yeah. the records were released. Um, which put a connotation on them that they were right. definitely not white records. They were race wet records, which meant simply that it was people of color. Um, right. And so it wasn't until um, then there was the first black record company didn't come about till 1921, which was actually after Mamie Smith. And it was right. called Black Swan Records but they okay. still refer to what they did as race records. And so yeah. it's like the, we couldn't win. <laughs> yeah. But I still guess had to make that distinction. That time, um, I mean, what else could they have been called? Colored records, you know, right. the, the, the color so. had to be distinguished one way or another, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. unfortunate uh, because white people love listening to the music as much as black people. But, <laughs> but there needed to be that distinction made, um, which is just, uh, it's unfortunate. Now, there was a movie, what was the movie that recently came out? Did you see it? Was it about Mamie Smith? Or no, who was it? Was Mamie uh, There was one about Mahalia Jackson that no, came there was out one recently. recently. I think it was on Netflix with, um, um, 
oh goodness, was it about Mamie Smith? With the the Black Panther um, actor, my name, my my brain is blank at the moment. Look, he was and, in the movie I, as well. Look, don't, don't Chadwick Boseman. Ah, yes, <laughs> Chadwick yes. Boseman. I am oh, also. I not remember movies. his name. I know. I'm also with movies. Crazy. Uh, music. I'm pretty good. Movies. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, he was in a movie. He was. It was the last movie, obviously, that he made. But um, he was in the. He, they made the Black Bottom. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Black Bottom. That's yes. it. See, ah, I knew it would come if I just it kept came, talking. It came. It came like a light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but in, in that movie, um, it really sort of illustrated the um, the peculiar place that Black artists and musicians were in because they were at the mercy of these recording companies that was their only ticket to making money off of their music, getting known, getting their music out there. And yet they still had so much control. And and the Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Ma Rainey was the featured character or singer. And she was really trying hard to sort of maintain her her autonomy and her control over her music, you know, in spite of um, the constraints. And, you know, especially think about for a woman in, in, in that time, it was just, it was tough. So I, I think that it's a testament to um, our persistence and our fortitude and our insistence on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making it, whatever that looked like, whether it was surviving slavery or, you know, getting our, our work recognized and getting, getting, uh, be valued for what we are able to contribute. I think, and that's, I guess that's, that goes back to why I think it's so great that we now have this intentional time that we have as a country to acknowledge all that has been done in the Which past. Which is why I also think um, a lot of artists have known the value of owning their own um, rights to their music, yeah. their own production to their music, um, yeah. there, there is wisdom in that. Um, when you hear, Ooh, somebody got a $20 million record label. Well, record deal. Yeah. Record deal. Right. What happens mm -hmm. is until you produce $20 million, you really don't get anything, you know, <laughs> it's very nominal, um, until right. you give back what you have uh, been bought for. And so yeah. um, we're, we are being that we are in the area that we are, where we live, we get to see, you know, we're not far from Nashville. Mm -hmm. Six people don't know, but Highway 65 or Interstate 65 is the corridor. Uh, it goes pretty far down in the South and it goes all the way up to Chicago where <laughs> artists can really, before COVID, jump on the road and have a tour on 65 alone and do huh. well. Right. And, and yeah. most people don't know that, but if you, yeah, never. you if, and then a lot of them live in Nashville and this is black, yeah. white, this is, you know, artists, a lot of the artists, look Nashville, Memphis, um, Alabama has a rich history in the music industry. Yeah. Um, we have, um, Kelvin Wooten has been inducted into the hall of fame, not too far, an hour and a half from here at, um, in, I think it's in Moulton where the music hall of fame is. And, and, you know, we walk in this area with so many different musicians who that's what they do. But my point is indie artists have understood and they now understood even more so, which probably goes back to the way Black Swan, I don't know really much about their inception. It goes back mm -hmm. to the reason why you have to hold on to what you have, because if not, yeah. You've kind of sold yourself to someone who's going to make money off of you. And you, those residual returns don't come back often. If you're a one hit wonder, you're a one hit wonder. You know, That's and we've it. seen that. Yeah. You'll see. Not yeah, everybody so gets cold. to be a Stevie Wonder, not, uh, you know, right. or Luther Vandross or uh, Mahalia right. Jackson and where they their legacy lives long after them. Um, and so yeah. if you don't have that type of legit longevity, then it's it's very important to make sure that you protect your um your property your intellectual property your you know yeah. all of that and so yeah it's just interesting to see how the music industry has changed so much um over yeah. the last well i guess that's a hundred years since since uh, yeah yeah that's about a hundred years 
And 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 what's also interesting though is how it's been a hundred years, but we're still talking in the language kind of of slavery, if you think mm-hmm. about it, because you know, slaves didn't have any control over their bodies. They were bought and sold. They made money for their masters. And then you talk about Black music being co-opted by the mainstream. Then when they are finally able to record, they're still in the control of the recording studios who are able to buy and sell them in in terms of their music and their art and their Mm -hmm. work in very much the same way. And, And so, you know, even down to our current time, our current generation, when Prince or the for- artist formerly known as Prince, when he was protesting, you know, he called himself a slave. He he basically used that same language of being bought and sold. And so it's like that history of slavery is intertwined with the history of, of our music in this country as mm-hmm. we've tried to fight for that freedom to cr- be creative and, and to express ourselves and to have ownership of our own work um it's just ironic that we're it's kind of the same language that we're talking about even yeah, as it's, we talk it's, about the music it's a tricky situation and it's actually in some ways it's sad but the beauty is seeing um when you see a jay-z um you see a jay-z who has done very well um yeah. which we can't really speak to you know He's done well as far as industry standards um, right. and the way that he has done it, I'm not going to speak on, but it right. is amazing to me to just watch that um, yeah. because there, there is value in having ownership. Yes, there absolutely. Is. There is. Um, you were mentioning uh, you know, where we are. I never thought about that. 65 stretching all the way to Chicago. That's a really neat tip. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's good info. I didn't think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just speaking of our local um, black musicians who are historic, W.C. Handy, the uh, father of blues right up the street. Um, we have the W.C. Handy And they have the Handy here. Music Festival that happens yeah. in the Florence area. I don't yeah, think they did it last year, here. but that, that happens right. in, I think it's the last week in July. Um, yeah. Right. So that history is right down the street from us. And as you say, we're we're kind of right on the on the path of all the, um, with Nashville being right up the road, um, so much good music around here. And even right here in Huntsville, right here on the, the land where we <laughs> reside, many of us um, every day, we, uh, as, as, as Oakwood alum and, and um, some of us work for Oakwood still, um, I, I did at one time, you know, coming through and being around Oakwood, there's there's just a rich, rich uh, musical tradition that I'm very proud of, um, proud to be somewhat a part of in that I've grown up with it around me my whole life. <laughs> um, and so that's awesome too, to, to think about how just our local musicians right here in Huntsville, right here on Oakwood's campus are a part of this rich history right. that, that goes so far, so far back. Um, and I think we kind of take it for granted also, Kim. Um, oh, yeah. For especially sure. the fact, well, you know, there's hardly ever a program you can go to that you don't have quality music. Um, right. But then you're rubbing arms with the likes of Stevie Mackey, you know, who yeah. is now doing quite well. Um, he was at the inauguration this year and he was able to, He's been coaching J Lo. You know, he was mm-hmm. on The Voice as one of the the backup singers. And, I mean, he went to school at Oakwood, and so yeah. there are so Oakwood many Academy. people. Right, Take Six, mm-hmm. uh, Little Richard is buried yep. here because he went to school here. So yep. many different names, um, and even talking about opera, um, Porgy and Bess. Yeah. We talked about that. They won a Grammy this year and there were two Oakwoodites, Makita Hampton and uh, Christine Jobson. And then um, a former music teacher, Dr. Latoya Lane, um, they were all performers in um, Porgy and Bess on the Met. And like, awesome, right. And so it's just amazing the history (laughs) that comes out of Huntsville, Alabama. It um, is. It's a beautiful thing, and the music yeah. is so rich. The Aeolians, as we all know, Choir, Choir of the World, 
Um, so we take it for granted, but yeah. it is, it runs deep within our veins. Uh, um, there's a saying that we all can sing. I won't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, it's just like we all can dance too, right? Right, right, uh. right. But I just love the rich history of what we have here. And, you know, you try not to take it for granted, but it's so easy to do so. It is easy to. Um, what, what also it speaks to, because Oakwood is, is definitely connected to the, uh, to a Christian Church and Seventh Day Adventist Christian Church, mm-hmm. and, and all, all of the musicians that you named have their roots in the church, and and that's actually true of other artists, even mm-hmm. those that are not connected to Oakwood, right? You, so many of our great musicians have their beginnings in the church, um, and you know, I I think that speaks to that, that that speaks to something. I mean, they may go out, they may go out and do other things, but the fact that it starts with that spiritual connection, that that home base being church and a belief in God. And we talked at the beginning about how music is really tied to worship. Um, I think that that also is really, really characteristic of Black music in particular, because there's there's so much soul and heart that is in our music. And I, and I really think it's that connection to a, a, a belief in a higher power, a belief in God that infuses uh, black music. And so even when it goes, when it, you know, it begins in the church and even, but even when it goes out, there's still that distinction that, that it's that sound, it's that, that heart and that soul that, that really makes it special. Um, even when it goes out <laughs> of the church, um, I think little Richard talked about, um, well, I think he kind of pushed the envelope. Oh, Ray Charles too, but pushed the envelope when they went out of the church and took that music mm-hmm. with them into the secular space because it was that that root, rootedness in gospel that made it different and made it something that the world was interested in. It was like, oh, this is a new sound, you know? Um, but uh, it just it's just, to me, a, a sort of a indication that you, you never should forget where you came from, right? <laughs> that that is always going to be there. Even when you walk, try to walk away from it, 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 it stays and it's still a very integral. You still Absolutely. there? I am. Uh, I, I'm I not sure what just happened. Sorry about that. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, yeah, I yeah. Was, I was just going to add to that. We like you watch the Grammys, and I was watching the Billboard Awards uh, last week, week before last, and it's just most people when they get their awards, one of the first things they say, especially our artists. They will yes. say, you know, thank God, glory right? and honor to God, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it can be the hardest rap. I know. <laughs> I, it always but surprises me. The, <laughs> but that just goes to say it runs so deep. It runs deep. Yeah. It does. Because they everybody, they most of us, you can't say everybody, <laughs> but uh, most of us have a praying mother, a praying grandmother, a praying auntie somewhere that we are able to say, you know, it's, it's in us, you know? Um, and a lot of us have like, that's been our mainstay, especially if you are coming, well, actually we just talked about it earlier. I think that that's just the woven thread for all of us. That's how we have been able to endure. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, um, and, and it has not been an easy, but it's no. been our thing that we hold on to. Um, and yeah. so when we're able to have something to hold on to, um, we make the best of it. And I think that that is one thing as a culture um, for Black people across the world, regardless of what we have going on, we're able to make lemonade out of lemons. Um, you can give us the um, most um, smallest tools, and we're gonna yeah. figure it out. Doesn't we're take gonna much. Figure it out. Yeah. yeah, I was in um, Las Vegas last week, and we were just walking through the strip, and you know they have people on the streets doing their different, selling their different wares and doing their different things, and there was a black guy out there 
beating on, I, I should have shared, maybe I'll try to share it in the comments later, but I have, the, I took a video of him because he had like a, um, an empty tub turned over, um, like a paint, like just a pail, just like a plastic pail turned over. And he had like a sh piece of sheet metal. And I feel like he had like a right. j glass jar and he had some drumsticks and he was just beating out a, a rhythm with these various surfaces in, in such a way that it was, it was a nice little, it was a catchy little beat and everybody started kind of gathering around and some people started dancing. <laughs> that rhythm was, that's in you. <laughs> it was incredible. I was really amazed by this dude. Like he was just this dude on the street making music out of the simplest things. And like you said, it was just that you take, we have taken what we've been given and we've made music with it. I mean, I, I, I there's love a lot right there. I think, uh... <laughs> There is a group, they were actually in town not too long ago, um, called Unknown Lyric. Unknown mm -hmm. Lyric. And mm -hmm. it's a violinist and a guitarist. Like, yes, who would put I those two? Them. Right. Who would put those two instruments together, right? Oh. Yeah. And they go exactly. around and they teach young people why they do what they do. When yes, I say, I like, it's hip hop. It is classical. It is a little, it's a little bit of everything thrown into the yeah. pot. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I've heard them and I know I've heard of them. Right. It's amazing. Like I love the creativity yeah. and yeah, I love mixing it up. And, and it actually reminds me of another historic figure that I looked up and, that, and her name is Rosetta Tharp. And we'll have to share the link with you to this video of her, but she played the guitar and she did it in such an amazing way that she was, uh, I think they let it later dubbed her like godmother of rock and roll or something like that because mm. rock and roll artists sort of picked up on some of the things that she was doing with the guitar and incorporated it into their work. Right. But if you look at her play, she plays the, the video that we'll, we'll share um, the link to it, she's playing Down by the Riverside, mm. right? Like, it's just this basic <laughs> song, but she is jamming on this guitar to Down by the Riverside, and I was like, look at this woman, and and she's a woman that you would not ever expect to see with a guitar, like, it just doesn't fit right, right. What, our, what our image of a guitarist would look like, but she was jamming on that thing, and you know, the fact that she was, that she was who she was, and, and, and Yet she was distinct in such a, a you, you know such a amazing way that her techniques were actually taken up by rock and roll artists later. Um, I just mm -hmm. think that's so. It, it's that same thing that we're that we were talking about how uh, we our people have been you know contributing to music from the beginning with our. Uh, you know, with our unique way. And, and it's right. always unique. Like everything that we've been talking about, it's like unexpected. It's, it's you know, it, it doesn't, we don't know. It's amazing what we, right. what well, our- Well, it's unexpected are. for us, but I think yeah. the music has a story to it. Um, yeah. You're talking about Rosetta. Like there is sometimes, well, a lot of times the music is, it, it, I think about um, Nipsey, you know, and how his tragic death, I think about him and, but his music was so intentional, right? And so there are so many artists whose music are so um, intentional, but yeah. they speak to where they are. Um, right. I may not understand it because that may not be my story, but there's always a story. There's always, um, a line that goes with it. There's history, there's right. passion, there's compassion, yeah. there's empathy, there is realness in it. Um, yeah. I, I was one of my favorite artists for 2021. Maybe it was the end of, you know, we said this went, this year has gone by so quick. Um, her name is Alea Sheffield and she just started, um, she just started doing um, music and she's been on like Instagram and YouTube for a while. My son gets that, like, I get on his nerves because she has this song that's called Earth is Ghetto, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Kim, you have to listen to it because I, it is I so catchy. The tone, yeah. the words, the, the story behind it, she has blown up. It got so 
crazy for her that she was like, this is too much. Like she, it was instant stardom, but she had been doing it for so yeah. long. People yeah. started remixing the song and sending it to her in so many different genres, right? You would have a hip hop artist, you would have um, just an instrumentalist, but they would put her with it, you know, the side by side. It yeah. is amazing. And she's just, a, as I would say, a roundaway girl. Like she's just, yeah. <laughs> she's somebody that you would just know. But Alaya yeah. Sheffield, Earth is Ghetto, one of my favorite songs. And it just really I'm speaks to that. where we are right now. Like, so there's a line in the song. Yeah. Can you beam me up? I want to leave. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, just need to get out of here. But I just yeah. like, I love music. I actually yeah. get excited about it because it's just yeah. a part of what I do professionally and I'm blessed to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also, it's, it's been my, mm, it's been the constant for me. Um, yeah. I sing random songs all the time of all genres. If something comes on, I probably know it. Um, <laughs> I just, I love music. And when you can't say a word, you can sing, you know? There's yeah. always a song in my heart. Some of yeah. them may not be appropriate for Sabbath, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I, you're speaking to is the power of music mm -hmm. to speak to the soul. And the reason these different artists and these different singers and musicians have an audience is because something that they've experienced that they're expressing through song connects with something that someone else has also experienced that they can identify with. And, and that's what gives it its power, right? I went to pre-COVID, I went to an Avery Sunshine concert. Um, and if you have not seen her in person, my Jesus. <laughs> she is all things. Cause she'll start with just her own music. She's a Spelman grad, she's from Philly. Um, she will start with just regular whatever kind, you know, whatever's in her soul. By the end of it, you are having straight up church. Like uh, shoes are off. She's, she <laughs> plays the keyboard as well. Her husband's on the bass with her and she has her other you know, musicians with her, but she is so real, but she goes everywhere. And at that time, her father had passed earlier in that year. And her mom called while she was on stage and she took the call. She was like, just need to make sure you're okay. Right. Oh, but okay. Was, and, and we talked to her mom and made sure mom was okay. My <laughs> mom, I think, is 83 now. Mm -hmm. But the way that she does music really just speaks to her life and mm -hmm. what she is doing. Um, yeah. and, and I think that that's really what music is for us, maybe. And I'm just saying culturally, which is we're talking about Black Music Month. Culturally, I think that's what it has always been. It speaks to wherever we are at that time in our lives. And yeah. you may get a glimpse of it. You may not. Um, you may be able <laughs> to see it on the stage. You may not. Um, but it has been the tie that has bound us together. And, and I love that you think of Charlie Pride, you know, um, yeah who was a country artist and he has ties to Huntsville. If you didn't know, um, he has family here. He does. Um, oh. but, um, Charlie pride was phenomenal in country music, you know, and there's, there's a few black artists who are doing very well right now because yeah. of, you know, the road that he paid for them. And so, um, you know, th I don't think there's any genre of music that we don't do even heavy metal. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I think that we sometimes assume that Black music is one thing, but mm -hmm. the reality is this, <laughs> there's Black music in every genre. And, and uh, yeah, we need to it's really everything. recognize that. We're not, yeah, we're not isolated to one thing. Mm -hmm. And I that, think that's why people don't like us. <laughs> probably. We're like, we just got our hands in everything. <laughs> right. And they think that they can confine us to one thing. We're not. Yeah. You know, we no. are so not. And what God has gifted us with is we will find a way, like you were talking about, you know, the pan and the sticks and the, the pan. Yeah. We'll, find a, we'll find a five gallon pan and yeah. figure out, what, like steel pan, right? How to make it music. Yeah. Right. Seriously. We'll find something and we will make a way with it. 
And I yeah. think that that is the beauty of us as a people, um, that we are always able to do because God just put it in us because he knew that we were going to struggle, you know, that the odds were going to be against us. Um, I have worked in situations and I don't talk about it much at all anymore um, because I realized that I carried more than I thought when I left. Right. <laughs> more, more pain than I thought. So I, I, I did an interview earlier this year and I was like, hmm, y'all can't release that because that that had a lot in it. Oh. Um, but I worked at a place and it was, it was a contemporary Christian station, loved it while I was there. Absolutely. But I saw a different side of the industry, um, where we are not embraced, where we are not loved, where we may have a song or two on the station. Um, but we'll have, um, the underlying theme may have a little bit of us in it. And so I was to me, I had to say to myself, this is not a representation for me, no one else, of heaven, right? Because when mm -hmm. I see heaven, I see all people. I see everybody being celebrated. I, I see mm -hmm. it being black, white, all people. Right. Um, and so that's why I say I'm blessed to do what I do now because I'm, I'm able to celebrate all people because I'm at an HBCU, then absolutely. I'm celebrating us. I'm telling our stories right. because they don't get told. Um, but it's, yeah. it's still like I want it to be a place where we can talk about everybody's Jesus, you know, not just one vantage point. So I just love yeah. I love black music. I do. I love all music, yeah. but I love us. And I yeah. love how creative we are. I, I do, too. I think that the the struggles that have that inform our music is what gives it a certain uh difference to perhaps other music, other origins, other music that has other origins. And um, that struggle that is infused in the music mm -hmm. that we create can speak to the struggle of people, whoever they are, whether they're black or white or whatever, but that, that, that like I keep talking about the soulfulness, the, the agony, the pain that a lot of our music came out of, I think is the thing that gives it its, its um, mm -hmm. strength and its impact. Um, because, it's beauty. <laughs> yeah, it's beauty, honestly, because we all as humans struggle and have pain and have heartache. And so I think that's why the blues was such a powerful mm -hmm. uh, genre of music, because it, it just it just spoke that pain. It, it sang the pain. Um, but it was through that release of it that that we were able to handle it. And I think that that's what the, the power and the beauty of black music has been is is that uh, where it came from and how that uh, really speaks to the human experience. And mm -hmm. which is why I believe that so many, you know, appreciate it, love it, accept it, co-opt it, whatever. <laughs> that was a nice word, co-opted. Yeah. <laughs> I would have used a different word, but we'll go with co-opt. <laughs> we'll but, but you know, I, there's a story that's told of, uh, I don't know if it was an actual instance or if it was just a story I heard in a sermon, you know, how they use these examples, but mm -hmm. some white person came up to a black person and says, oh man, I can't wait till we get to heaven. I'm gonna come over on your side of heaven to listen to y'all's music, you know? And it's like, we realize, don't we, that it's not going to be a black side and a white side of heaven. So right. we really should probably start getting along and appreciating one another now and um, stop doing all this separating and putting into right. categories because right. at the end of the day, it's about the human experience. It is, um, but in the meantime, we're gonna celebrate. But yeah, I mean, yeah, because, <laughs> because like you said, if we don't acknowledge what we've contributed, it will get just kind of pushed aside and, and we won't be able to appreciate it. Right. Um, so that's why we are kicking off June with this emphasis on Black music history. And I hope all of you will join us each week uh, as we continue this conversation. It is one that uh, will be a lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna in particular talk to some uh, artists that are currently doing music and hear about their experience and what has drawn them to do this work. And uh, we definitely wanna hear from you all about who your favorite artists are, what kind of music in particular speaks to you and why. And um, so that's what we're gonna do. And 
before we say goodbye, Audrey, uh, we're going to go to our scripture because it okay. always goes back to that. And our scripture is uh, says, my heart, oh God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's about our heart and our soul and how we can, how music is so much a part of our worship of um, our creator. And so that's what we're going to focus on. I love that. I love that text. Yeah. Because, like I said, it speaks, when you think of our music, you think of soul. Yeah. You think of it through the, yeah. I have my, um, my Lauren Hill shirt on today. I was telling you about yes. it. And yes. I don't know I if you Lauren can Hill. see it, but it's, <laughs> it, I wore it today because I needed the world to know. And it says warrior on it, but I, because yeah. that's just really, that's what, I love about our music. It's soulful. It speaks to our experience. Um, we are warriors in a lot of right. situations. And so right. I just love what God has put in us to completely just come through um, all yes. situations and sing about it. Like who does that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I know. And, and that's what should be encouraging to each one of us when we are going through something um, let's hold to, let's hold on to what we have and let's, right. you know, sing your pain, you know, grasp onto these artists that have put it out there for us, for our benefit, for the glory of God, especially. And, and if they can get through it, if the slaves could make it through slavery, doggone it, we can make it through that hard day at work. Right. We ought to be able to, um, so that's to me, what is inspiring about, um, the history of our people is, is all that they actually endured in order for us to have the freedoms that we have, even though life is imperfect. Um, it's certainly better than it was. And so that's the other, I think, really important thing about taking the time to remember these, this, this history and, and those individuals that have paved the way for us. So next week, Audrey, we have um, a special guest by the name of Sharona Drake. Tell us a little bit, mm -hmm. a bit about You're Sharona. going to enjoy her, Kim. I, I know I will. I I've, really I've been are. checking her out a little bit already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is, when we talk about all things, she is all things. Um, she's spiritual. Yeah. She is an artist. She's an author. She's a mom now. Um, awesome. She is a radio host. She has been a pastor. Um, she has done it all. She is, yeah, she is so culturally relevant. Um, she has a beautiful story. And I think you're going to see the whole picture of music through her. Like she has a beautiful testimony on, you know, um, how she has come to where she is now, but she's just fun. She is so much yeah. fun. Um, she is loving mom life right now. Um, so <laughs> I think you're really going to enjoy. She is on 94.5 here in Huntsville on their gospel side. Um, oh, and she is enjoying that. She's doing a lot of fun stuff. I, I can say that because I want everybody to get to heaven. So I don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's not my station, like I, I still right, right. We support each other. But you're okay. gonna really enjoy Sharona. She is all things. Awesome. Well, we are excited to have her on Hey Girl next week. So you guys yes. be sure to tune in and we're gonna keep this conversation going. Until then, enjoy the week. Work hard, play hard, and we'll be back here again um, next Saturday, 5 p.m same station. So make sure you're here too. Audrey, I'll see you next time, girl. All right. Take care. This was fun. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> hey girl, thanks for joining us today. Had a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Also, this month we are jamming in June as we celebrate Black Music History Month and be sure to join us next week as our special guest will be author and singer Sharona Drake. You don't want to miss it.